I need to cut my bangs. Look at these guys. They are long and in charge today. <laughs> All right, so today it's September Raisin Rejects. This is where we talk about the best and worst products from the last couple months. I like to do these videos every other month just so I have enough time to thoroughly test products and tell you what's really worth it and what's not. I feel like Carol Baskin today. Did you guys know that Carol Baskin is on Dancing with the Stars this year? They actually casted amazing for Dancing with the Stars this year. It's the first year that I've been tempted to watch because Caitlin Bristow's on it. Chriselle from Selling Sunset and Carol Baskin. I mean, what a trio. But anyways, let's talk about September Raise and Reject, shall we? So in September, or my months are all confused, in the last month or two or whatever, I've done a lot of favorites videos, like current favorites, Etsy favorites, lifestyle favorites, that kind of thing. So I'm going to link a few of those videos down below if you missed those, because I'm not going to be doing any product repeats from those videos, but those are all still my favorites, obviously. But I just wanted to pop in at the beginning of the video, a little fall sweatshirt announcement since it is only going to be available for a limited time. It's limited edition, so here it is if you missed it. I'll have my Raves and Rejects playlist linked down below in the description box if you want to see my past favorites, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do while you're watching, you can give this a thumbs up. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Let's get into September Raves and Rejects. All right, so let's start out with the CoverGirl Clean Fresh powders. So I have been using the shades 110 and 120, 110 underneath my eyes and 120 for my face since these came out. So I think it's actually been a couple months now, I believe, maybe a month and a half or so. But for underneath my eyes, I love using this with the Shop Miss A sponge. It is super soft. I just like to swirl it in the powder, press it underneath my eyes in the shade 110. Adds coverage. This powder is very unique in the sense that it gives you this soft kind of airbrushed look. I don't love powders. Typically, I'm very picky with powder. Not all powder works for my skin. Most powders don't work for my skin, so it's more often than not that I prefer not to use powder. And I actually like this one, like I said, for both setting my concealer underneath my eyes and just for using on my face, whether it's all over my face with certain foundations or just you know, on this area of my face to be able to blend products on top like bronzer and stuff. But the shade 110 is perfect for me for setting my under eye concealer. I love that it adds some coverage. This powder does add a little bit of coverage. I wouldn't say on its own it's a full coverage powder in the sense that you could use it as like a powder foundation, but I would say it's about a medium coverage where if you're using it to set your liquid foundation, it is going to add some coverage. It is a matte powder. There's no dew to this powder. There's no kind of glowy finish. It's a full-on matte powder, but it gives you this very soft kind of airbrushed look, which is what I love about it. I actually like using this sponge with this powder to set my whole face too. It applies beautifully. And this sponge is $1.55. I'm gonna link both of these down below. All the products I talk about in today's video are linked down below in the description box. While we're talking about the base, let's talk about the product that you might be seeing a little bit of the glow from on my forehead specifically because the foundation I'm wearing, the NARS soft matte one, the new one. So that one is fully matte and any of the glow that you're seeing on my forehead is from this product. This is the Dior Backstage Contour Palette. This is an interesting product. I reviewed this, did like a mini review in my recent speed reviews video. This I love because it is very customizable to whatever you want it to be. So I didn't even realize this as I started really using it and like digging into it and playing around with it. But they say that technically these two shades are supposed to be highlighters, depending on what your skin tone is. There definitely is like a, a slight shimmer in both of these, but I use them in totally different ways and they work out really well for my skin tone. And the way that I use them is I basically mix like all three shades or if I just want a contour shade, I'll go in with this shade, which is completely matte. But the formula of these are very nice. They're super blendable. They're very soft. They're easy to work with. And I just like that unintentionally, just how I was using it, there is this shade in here that I kind of use as like a mixing shade almost. So if this one is looking like a little bit too dark one day, just like depending on my foundation shade, I'll like mix in some more of this one, kind of tone it down, but it does add 
that glow because technically it's it's not really a highlight like it's a very 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 subtle highlight shade it's almost more of like a I mean look it's like kind of like the hourglass ambient light powders like that kind of highlight it's like a very subtle highlight but you can see it does have a sheen it is going to give that glow and that's what's on my forehead today is just those two shades mixed but since I've been testing this the past couple months I've just found myself really reaching for this a ton. And it's one that doesn't disappoint whenever I use it. I really enjoy it. And because I find myself getting use out of three of the shades in here, personally, I do think it's worth the money. It's looking like this is the shade 001 Universal, and that's the only shade that they make. So probably should come out with a few more shades. So for a while, I've been talking about how I've been on the hunt for the perfect body lotion. I'm very picky with my body lotion. I don't like something that's sticky. I really want something that's glowy and where the glow lasts. I don't mind a scented body lotion, but that's like not top on my list, you know. It's mostly just the glow and like a certain texture that I look for. And I have found my perfect body lotion, you guys. You can get it online or in store Target. I actually saw it. But this is the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Balm. They make two different versions. Make sure you get the balm version, which is the balm. Wow, dad joke. It says for extra dry skin. It says you can use it on your face too. I don't know about that. I haven't tried it on my face. Probably won't try it on my face. Fragrance-free, safe for babies, children, safe for eczema. And I just find this is the perfect body lotion for what I look for. It gives the prettiest glow to your skin. It looks like you just have the healthiest, dewiest, plumpest skin. It makes my skin feel hydrated without feeling too tacky, sticky. It doesn't fully absorb right away to the point where like you can't feel it at all. So if you want something that's going to like immediately sink into your skin and not leave any kind of residue, this does leave like a little bit of a lotiony feel. But I personally don't want that because I do like my skin to still feel hydrated like throughout the night, but it doesn't feel sticky. Skin just feels very smooth and soft. Love the glow. Again, should I say again, the glow. Love the glow. I have tried the Nivea body lotion. I personally think this one was better. I'm definitely going to be repurchasing this one once I'm out of it. Really enjoy it. Okay, let's talk about the lip color that I'm wearing right now. I am always on the hunt for perfect, cool toned, light lip colors for obviously my skin tone because that's what I'm wearing. So this is the NYX Lingerie Push-Up Long-Lasting Lipstick in the shade Corset. And I've actually had this for a while. I just, actually I think in a vlog I showed like going, oh I did a declutter. Yeah, I did a lipstick declutter and I showed kind of pulling out ones I wanted to retry, blah, blah, blah. This was one of the ones that I wanted to retry. And this is like, I mean, you can see it on my lips. It's the perfect cool toned shade if this is what you're looking for. Typically with this kind of eye look, I would probably pair it with something a little bit warmer, but I wanted to show you guys what this color looked like on. But the formula of these are also really nice. It's nothing like the liquid lipstick lingeries. Those ones I didn't like. Those I found to be just like very slidey. These dry down matte and they're quite long lasting like it says. They stay on pretty well throughout the day for just being like a lipstick, a traditional lipstick, not a liquid lipstick. And I also love these because they smell like mint, kind of pepperminty, which is kind of more rare. Usually lipsticks, you know, smell like like vanilla or fruity or something. And this one smells like mint, which I love. So if you watched my speed reviews video, you kind of got some sneak peeks into some of the products that turned into favorites that you're now seeing in this video. I want to do more of those because it is a really good way to kind of give you like halfway point things where some of those products might turn into favorites that you see in Raves and Rejects, some you might never hear about again. I think those videos are really useful. But this one I talked about in that video and oh my god, I just get the chills just thinking about the smell of this. I haven't even whipped this yet. Oh my god. <sighs> Gives me all the feels. Okay, this is the Tree Hut Tahitian Vanilla Bean Moisturizing Shave Oil. So I heard about this shave oil from what is on my hand? I heard about the shave oil from Jessica Braun, but she uses a different scent. I decided to pick up the vanilla bean scent. First of all, the actual product is amazing. It's a shave oil. So I mean, exactly what it sounds like. It's not rocket science. Instead of shaving with a shave cream or shave lotion, it's an oil. It's amazing because it doesn't clog up your razor. It's very thin. So I don't find it to be like too 
thick of an oil. It doesn't irritate my skin. I do have sensitive skin. I do get razor burn. For being so fragranced, I'm actually shocked that it doesn't irritate my skin. If you have eczema or something though, I mean, I would probably say don't, you know, use this on your skin. I don't have eczema, but I do have sensitive skin. And some fragrance products do irritate my skin, but this one doesn't. So I do use this to shave and I really enjoy it for shaving because it's just like a very slick kind of feeling. But I also use this on days that I don't shave. I just use this like after I use my body wash and clean my body. I like using this almost as like a, I don't even know what you want to call it, like an in shower perfume because it lingers on your body and you can smell it throughout the night. I shower at night so I can like smell it when I'm going to bed and oh my god the smell of this is just they need to turn this into a perfume. If you like vanilla seriously you need to get this. So I did a BH Cosmetics one brand tutorial last month and ever since I did that video I've been reaching for this blush palette non-stop. It's the Bellini Weekend Vibes six color blush palette so you get six blushes in here and I basically can use any of these four if I use a stippling brush. I love this one by Sigma. It's the F15 because these ones tend to be more pigmented. If I'm using this one I can use any brush or the shade two I can get away with any brush but if I want to use these two I have to use a stippling brush just to get kind of like a lighter application. But today I used this one with this brush. They seem to all be matte. This one might have a tiny bit of shimmer but I don't think so like barely any really affordable blush palette BH Cosmetics makes some awesome affordable products check out that video if you want some other options from them of recommendations but I've just been reaching for this blush palette a ton totally forgot to mention this when I was talking about the Dior palette but this Believe Beauty brush this is four dollars from Dollar General and this is one of those ones that I've been using for since I did the video on Dollar General Makeup Bleed Beauty. So that was, I think like a year ago now or so around then. And it's just one of those things that I realized like I haven't given enough love to, but that I use very frequently when I'm doing my makeup. It's technically called their powder brush. I don't like using it for powder, but I love it for bronzer. Or if you're someone who likes using kind of like a bigger brush for blush, you could use it for that as well. For my face, it's like a tiny bit too big for what I like for blush, but I love it for bronzer. I used it today and it's just like the perfect density. It's super soft and for $4, it's an awesome quality brush. All right, next up is the mascara I'm wearing right now, the NARS Climax Extreme Mascara. So the original one was the NARS Climax that came in the red tube. That one I've always really liked. This one I like even more. First of all, this packaging, I mean, oh my God, it's stunning. If I were to design a mascara, this packaging is probably pretty close to what I would choose. I just think it's the most beautiful mascara packaging I've ever seen. But besides from the packaging, so this is Climax Extreme. So it's intended to be a very voluminous, extreme, kind of mascara. So if you're a natural mascara kind of gal, this is not the one for you. This is if you like extreme, you know, kind of more on the clumpy side. I don't want to say clumpy because it has kind of like a bad connotation, but personally I like like thicker, not clumpy, but just like more volume kind of mascaras that tend to be a little bit clumpier that you can separate afterwards. The wand on here is a big boy, okay? This isn't for the faint of heart. I do have a very specific way I like to apply this, which I'll tell you in a second, but the formula of this I really enjoy because it is super black, but also it lasts really well throughout the day without transferring up, without smudging at all, without flaking at all. It is hard to remove. So that's one thing to know if you like your mascara to just kind of like you know, come off really easily at the end of the night. This one doesn't. You got to really remove it with an oil cleanser and stuff, but that's kind of the trade-off that you can have sometimes with mascara that lasts really well throughout the day. But the way that I like to apply it is layered with the Revlon So Fierce Mascara. This just in general is an awesome mascara to have in your makeup collection to layer with pretty much any mascara that you find is needing some separation without taking away the volume and actually kind of like adding volume at the same time as separating. It has this kind of like smaller-ish comb 
wand, so it's just really good for separating. So super quickly, how I like to apply this, do one coat of this, wait for it to dry down for about 50%, do a second coat, again, wait for it to dry down about 50%, then go in with the Revlon So Fierce and really work it in there, separate it, make sure you get like the outer lashes and separate really well. So that's how I like to apply these. Do you absolutely like need this mascara? No, you can get a very similar look with the Essence mascara I'll link down below for around, you know, three to five dollars from the drugstore. So you don't, I'm not saying you have to spend like this high end price tag to get this kind of mascara look. But if you've been curious about this, just really enjoy the packaging, whatever it is, if you prefer high end mascaras, whatever your reason is, I do really enjoy this mascara and I think it is worth mentioning that I've been using it. I love it. Next up is a hand cream from Glossier. <laughs> I know a sentence I thought I would never say myself, hand cream, but I love this stuff. Again, hand cream, I am even more picky with than body cream because there is something about hand cream that just drives me insane, like having that texture on my hands because I'm trying to get stuff done, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to have like slick hands and then it just drives me crazy. However, this one I've been keeping on my desk, just like next to my computer. And whenever I see it, I put it on. I think I'm almost out of this actually. I mean, the packaging so cute, but this smells amazing. If you like the Glossier U perfume, I think you would really like the smell of this. It doesn't smell exactly the same, but it's definitely a very similar kind of vibe. So this one feels very soft and moisturizing. It definitely doesn't feel greasy at all. And I like it because it absorbs in very quickly to the skin. It almost smells better as it's like sinking into your skin, which is kind of odd, but just with using all the hand sanitizer and, you know, washing your hands so frequently and stuff, I feel like a hand cream has been way more necessary for me than ever before, just because my hands are more dry than usual. So this has been really helping that situation. I went pretty in depth on these two products in my buy this, not that video. So I'm not gonna go crazy in depth again in this video, but I definitely need to highlight these two products again because it's all I've been using pretty much on my brows is the Urban Decay Brow Blade in Dark Drapes and the Milani Precision Brow Pencil in Medium Brown. I've been like switching it out, but this has been the one that I've been mostly reaching for. The brow Blade is friggin' awesome. You get a pen on one end and then a pencil on the other. I don't really use the pencil at all, but the pen is just great for getting that like kind of brow stroke kind of look. And I've been using this <laughs> for a couple months now, few months. It hasn't dried out at all. Like it's still going strong. The tip is really fine. Hasn't gotten like smushed down or anything. If you've been looking for a good brow pen, this is it folks. This is just an awesome drugstore brow pencil, super fine tip. And I like using this one for the front of my brows mostly. Next up we have this diffuser oil that I found on Amazon and Oh my freaking God. So this is the Centol diffuser oil and this is supposed to be a dupe for the, I think the, I why do I wanna say Hada Lobo? It's not gonna, why do I wanna say Hada Lobo? Lalabo? Yeah, Lalabo. It's a dupe for like a super high-end diffuser oil and you can get it off Amazon for, I think it's around like 15 bucks. I picked it up just like solely based off the reviews, obviously, cause you can't smell it through Amazon, unfortunately but you just put a few drops of this in your diffuser. This smells like the most heavenly hotel lobby. Like, you know when you just walk in a hotel lobby sometimes and you're like, what is that classy scent? I'd need my entire house to smell like that. This is, this is that. And if you get this and you like take a whiff like that, first of all, be careful because it's like whiffing oil like that is probably not the best thing to do. Don't do what I just did because it's like very concentrated. It doesn't smell like that. Once it diffuses, it smells completely different, but it smells so fresh, but like fancy. Fancy hotel lobby is the best way I can explain this. By the way, did you know that there are people who that's their job, like to find scents just for hotels that they like waft throughout the entire chain of hotels. That's so interesting. And also this really smells up your place really well. I like putting this on after I like take the trash and recycle out because I feel like it just like, cleanses everything and makes everything smell really fresh and good. All right, and then last rave is this dry shampoo by Dove. So this is another one that I mentioned in the speed reviews. This is the fresh coconut scent. Like I said in that video, it doesn't smell anything like coconut. It just smells like 
super fresh clean but it works really well on my hair i feel like it absorbs the oil i'm wearing it right now not that that tells you anything but my hair is pretty oily it was on like day six ish five six it does have a white residue to it but like I mentioned in that vlog I feel like that's what absorbs the oil so it doesn't bother me if there's a white residue as long as it blends into dark hair easily so if it has white coming out I don't mind if I can just go like that and it blends right in very effective on my hair it smells great from the drugstore and if you were scarred like years ago from Dove's issue where you purchased a dry shampoo and there was like no product in it they definitely have fixed it this has lasted me like a couple months now. <laughs> All right, now moving on to rejects. I only have two here that like really, really stood out to me. There were definitely foundations that stood out to me, but I'm saving those for a update video. But these two were just kind of like standout rejects, just personally didn't work for me. The first one is the Pharmacy Deep Sweep 2% BHA. And I tried this for a few weeks. And the reason this was like a major reject for me is I am pretty sure this actually broke me out. I stopped using it for about a week, my skin cleared up, and then I started using it again, and I started breaking out again. So I'm pretty sure I can attribute it to this, but besides the breakouts, like that aside, I was kind of testing this in place of my Holy Grail Paula's Choice BHA, which just is like forever a Holy Grail item that just does wonders for my skin. I didn't find that this did anything for my skin. Like it didn't change the texture of my skin. It didn't make my skin glowier. It didn't really do anything at all. So I would just say you could skip this one. I 100% recommend the Polish Choice BHA over this one. The packaging of this one is very nice though, I must say. And then the other reject is this perfume by Pacifica. It's called a Hardcore Happy Vanilla Coconut. I was stoked to try this because obviously I'm a big fan of vanilla and coconut. We have learned in this video. This smells like straight up banana boat sunscreen. And the other weird thing is there's no cap on this, which I just think is so weird for a perfume. Like, it just looks like something's missing. But yeah, the scent is just, I mean, it literally smells like straight up sunscreen. So if you've been tempted, uh, uh, yeah, don't do it. Get the oil. It'll do more for you than this. So those are all my September Raisin Rejects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. I'm going to have all of the products I talked about in today's video linked down below in the description box. But I think I told you all the makeup on my face. Besides my eyeshadow, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize. And this was so pretty. The browns in here, ooh, so nice. I used that palette. Yeah, I think I told you everything else. By the way, I always get asked about my rings and jewelry and stuff, and I made an FAQ section on my new website. So that's linked down below, but all of my rings are linked on there. My earrings are always linked in the description box. Any of the jewelry that I'm wearing in videos are linked down there, but everything is just in one place now on my website. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.